Hi guys, it's May 7, 2015. Wow. As I read this article, I was thinking of how systemic is the immorality in our country. And it is really frightening. And as I read this, these examples of the corruption that we're now facing, it's only a glimpse. It's only a fraction, a fraction of the corruption that is taking place today in our country. America's main problem, corruption. Sadly, in the months since we last posted on this topic, many new examples of corruption have arisen. The cop is on the take. Government corruption has become rampant. Senior SEC employees spent up to eight hours a day surfing porn sites instead of cracking down on financial crimes. And let me just interject here. The blue lettering are links to further information. Everything that I'm reading is provable. All you have to do is click on all of the links embedded in this article. But the Nuclear Regulatory Commission workers watch porn instead of cracking down on unsafe conditions at nuclear plants. An EPA employee who downloaded 7,000 porn files then spent two to six hours each working day watching porn. He's been doing it for years, but the EPA never fired him. Another EPA employee harassed 16 women co-workers and then was promoted to a higher paying job with more responsibility where he harassed more women. NSA spies pass around homemade sexual videos and pictures they've collected from spying on the American people. NSA employees have also been caught using their mass surveillance powers to spy on love interests such as girlfriends, obsessions, or former wives, and to eavesdrop on American soldiers' intimate conversations with their wives back home. And if you click on this, you'll get a, an article about how their routinely shared videos of or audio of salacious or tantalizing phone calls that had been intercepted. And one of the quotes that an NSA employee said is, hey, check this out, there's good phone sex. An employee of the Transportation Security Administration admitted that TSA agents share and laugh at nude scans of passengers. Another TSA employee says that screeners make excuses so they can grope and fondle travelers that they're attracted to. Investigators from the Treasury's Office of the Inspector General found that some of the regulators' employees surfed erotic websites, hired prostitutes, and accepted gifts from bank executives instead of actually working to help the economy. The Minerals Management Service, the regulator charged with overseeing BP and other oil companies to ensure that oil spills don't occur, was riddled with a culture of substance abuse and promiscuity, which included sex with industry contacts. Agencies from the Drug Enforcement Agency had dozens of sex parties with prostitutes hired by the drug cartels they were supposed to stop. They also received money, gifts, and weapons from drug cartel members. Pentagon employees used government credit cards to pay for adult escorts and to gamble. Federal agents with the Drug Enforcement Administration and Secret Service investigating Bitcoin money laundering extorted and stole over one million in Bitcoin. The IRS gave promotions to employees who were themselves tax cheats. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission has conspired with big banks to manipulate commodities prices for decades. The government-sponsored raiding agencies committed massive fraud. The Treasury Department allowed banks to cook their books. Regulators knew of and allowed the use of debt-hiding accounting tricks by the big banks. The Secretary of Treasury, Tim Geithner, was complicit in Lehman's accounting fraud. The former chief accountant for the SEC says Bernanke and Paulson broke the law and should be prosecuted. The government knew about mortgage fraud a long time ago. For example, the FBI warned of an epidemic of mortgage fraud in 2004. 
However, the FBI, the Department of Justice, and other government agencies then stood down and did nothing. For example, the Federal Reserve turned its cheek and allowed massive fraud, and the SEC has repeatedly ignored accounting fraud. And Alan Greenspan took the position that fraud could never occur. It couldn't happen. Paulson and Bernanke falsely stated that the big banks receiving TARP money were healthy when they were not. The Treasury Secretary also falsely told Congress that the bailouts would be used to dispose of toxic assets, but then use the money for something else entirely. A high-level Federal Reserve official says quantitative easing is the greatest backdoor Wall Street bailout of all time. The SEC has been shredding Wall Street documents for decades to help the big banks cover up their fraud. The nonpartisan Government Accountability Office <coughs> excuse me, calls the Fed corrupt and riddled with conflicts of interest. Nobel Prize winning economist Joe, Joe Stiglitz said the World Bank would view any country which had a banking structure like the Fed as being corrupt and untrustworthy. The former vice president at the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas said he worried that the failure of the government to provide more information about its rescue spending could signal corruption. Non-transparency in government programs is always associated with corruption in other countries, so I don't see why it wouldn't be here. That's what he said. Arguably, both the Bush and Obama administrations broke the law by refusing to close insolvent banks. Congress may have covered up illegal tax breaks for the big banks. Police have been busted framing innocent people. War mongerers in the U.S. government knowingly and intentionally lied us into a war of aggression in Iraq. The former head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest ranking military officer in the United States, said that the Iraq war was based on a series of lies. The same is true in Libya and other wars. The government lied when it said it doesn't conduct mass surveillance on Americans and then lied again when it said that spying was aimed at protecting America against terrorists. The government also lied when it said American, America doesn't torture and then lied once again when it said torture was aimed at protecting America against terrorists. The government made sure that false claims were made about the amount of oil spilled by BP in the Gulf. The government has framed whistleblowers with false evidence. The Pentagon falsely smeared USA Today reporters because they investigated illegal Pentagon propaganda. When one of the most respected radiologists in America, the former head of radiology department at Yale University, attempted to blow the whistle on the fact that the FDA had approved a medical device manufactured by General Electric that put out massive amounts of radiation, the FDA installed spyware to record his private emails and surfing activities, including installing cameras to snap pictures of his screen and then use the information to smear him and other whistleblowers. whistleblowers. In an effort to protect Bank of America from the threatened WikiLeaks exposure of wrongdoing, the Department of Justice told Bank of America to hire a specific hardball playing law firm to assemble a team to take down WikiLeaks. The Bush White House worked hard to smear CIA officers and bloggers and anyone else who criticized the Iraq War. Corruption at the FBI lab, lab led to the execution of scores of innocent people. The FBI smeared top scientists who pointed out the numerous holes in its anthrax case. Indeed, the head of the FBI's investigation agrees that corruption was rampant. Terror attacks such as 9-11, the Boston Marathon bombing, and the Texas shooting all happened because of pervasive corruption in our intelligence agencies. The biggest companies own the D.C. politicians. Indeed, the head of the economics department at George Mason University has pointed out that it is unfair to call politicians prostitutes. They are, in fact, pimps selling out the American people for a price. Government regulators have become so corrupted and captured by those they regulate that Americans know that the cop is on the take 
institutional corruption is killing people's trust in our government and our institutions. America is no longer a democracy or republic. It's officially an oligarchy, tyranny, police state. The allowance of unlimited campaign spending allows the oligarchs to purchase politicians more directly than ever. Moreover, there are two systems of justice in America, one for the big banks and other fat cats, and one for everyone else. The private sector is no better. For example, the big banks have literally turned into criminal syndicates. Wall Street and giant corporations are literally manipulating every single market. And the big corporations are cutting corners to make an extra penny, wreaking havoc with their carelessness. For example, fracking companies dump 3 billion gallons of highly toxic waste into California's drinking water supply. <laughs> fracking is polluting water all over the country. A study published in the journal Groundwater predicts that the highly toxic fluids used in fracking can, can migrate to aquifers within a few short years. In addition, it is now official that fracking can cause earthquakes. Yet fracking companies are using military psychological operations techniques to discredit opponents. Monsanto has claimed for decades that Roundup is safe, but the World Health Organization just said that it probably causes cancer. Monsanto forbids independent scientists from testing its GMO crops for safety and attacks the computers of people who oppose GMO foods. Sue small farmers when Monsanto GMO crops drift onto their fields. Big farmers are drenching their crops with Roundup right before harvest to save a buck. Big food companies work hand in glove with the government to dish up unhealthy food. BP's criminal negligence led to the giant Gulf oil spill. The real problem is that we need to learn a little history. We've known for thousands of years that when criminals are not punished, crime spreads. We've known for hundreds of years that the failure to punish financial fraud destroys economies as it destroys all trust in the financial system and it destroys individuals. So many people are suffering the consequences of this corruption. We've known for centuries that powerful people, unless held to account, will get together and steal from everyone else. Liberals and conservatives tend to blame our country's problems on different factors, but they are all connected. The real problem is the malignant symbiotic relationship between big corporations and big government. And I would add that the real problem also is that the people, the majority of the people in this country are allowing it.